Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is one of the most requested video that is how do you present a research paper. Apart from me explaining this to you, I have made a presentation here and uh, you can email me and uh, any other uh, links that you can possibly contact me. I'll put it in the description box where uh, this presentation would actually be an outline instead of me explaining it to you. I think that would give you a better picturization. So in case if you are keen in doing this, you can feel free to email me at any time and I'm sure I would try to respond to you and send you the presentation as well. So what is a research paper? This is something that, uh, you know, after you've learned in depth about a topic and you want to make a paper or an essay or a thesis, this is something that you do. So uh, many of you are confused what a thesis is and what a research paper is. Well, both of them are more or less the same, but thesis is something that you do in your post-graduation, you know, in order to attain your uh, degree. That is a thesis and it is probably a little prolonged over a long duration of time. You have your professors, everyone guiding you there. Whereas a uh, uh, research paper is something that is of uh, limited and short duration. It is not included in your academic curriculum. This is totally out of your interest. So what is the advantage of you doing a research paper? See, uh, apart from, you know, your personal interest, it can be used for your paper publication in your uh, national and international journals and make sure if you are from India, it has to be an MCI recognized journal. And uh, apart from that, uh, it is useful for conferences as a speaker. And then uh, in case you are applying uh, to go and study abroad, it is highly recommended and uh, it adds to your CV. In case if you are interested in a particular department, I suggest you to actually make a paper with respect to that subject instead of vaguely doing in every department that you free. Or, I mean, every department that you go through or every subject or topic that you feel like doing. So, so something which you are keen into getting something related to surgery, do a surgical uh, type of approach and uh, in case if you wanted to go into path, go do the histo histology related things and all of it and do not just go wayward and get altered with your direction. So if you are interested into getting in a particular department, so make sure that your paper aligns with it. That would actually add to your CV. And uh, okay, well, we will divide this video into three parts. One is plan, do, and write. Okay, uh, I this would be a three to four part series where I would be teaching the first basic part right now that is planning. Okay, what does it include? So planning includes understanding the assignment, choosing the research paper topic, conducting the preliminary research and develop a thesis statement. So let us go through each of it word by word and understand what you are supposed to do in each part. Okay, so first understanding the assignment. See, uh, that is something like understanding your area of interest and uh, particularly the subject or the diagnosis of choice or uh, regarding particular system or the lab investigations. Okay, spend time in understanding what you have selected. Okay, the next thing is feasibility. That is very important because unless and until it is feasible both to you and the patients, you cannot actually proceed. So make sure that feasibility is good, availability of patient, availability of lab facilities doing tests. In case you do not have any lab nearby, you can actually collect data from an NABL accredited lab. Okay, apart from that, uh, in case, suppose your investigation is not related to any of the lab uh, you know, connections. So make sure uh, then see the availability of the data that is relevant to your assignment. Okay, understand the size of the study. Very important. In case you, you can either do a, a large sample study, which is a, a routine and a large sample or something which is rare and a small sample. So make sure you are very specific with the amount of study that you wanted. And then uh, and understand that your time, your study is time bound. So do not prolong it over ages. So it is time bound. Next, second is uh, choosing the research paper topic. 
so you have to narrow down to the see once you choose a choose a subject you have to narrow down to the topic that actually interests you something that meets the criteria of the assignment something that is feasible and something that would add to a research value you have to choose something like that and then uh, you have once you have selected the topic go through many research papers which would be available online you can actually type the 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 you know uh, relevant name of your uh, whatever your thing is you can write type the relevant name and then you can find all the topics and you might actually get new topics that is how i did i first started doing uh, research on one topic and i finally ended up getting another more, more amount of ideas as well once i went through each and every journal and uh, it actually helps you increasing your ideas see it is not just uh, taking uh, you know uh the journals which actually are in line with your idea it is even accepting something that contradicts your research value okay uh, you have to go through all of that and it is very important not just going with it even the contradictory parts you have to go through it and then conducting the preliminary research that is whatever i have told you you know online resources journals websites and textbooks or anything you make sure you should you do not miss anything and whatever reference uh, material that you have taken you should always mention it in the reference column towards the end of your paper and uh, see there is what i told you do not verify the ideas that you have in your mind but also look for the sources that contradict your point of view and is there uh, any overlook in the sources you search any heated debates that you can address do you have any unique take on your topic or any recent advancement and the extent of research done on the topic of your interest then developing a thesis statement so this statement has to be concise contentious and coherent so what does that mean see it should actually briefly summarize your entire research work and what does it include you know making a thesis statement it includes the selected topic then the objective or aim of the study and then all the materials and uh, that you actually collected you know the the methods and materials that you made use in order to reach the final point all of it forms the thesis statement okay so it can either be a quantitative research that is i told you uh, like um, making finding patterns averages and then making predictions testing the causal relationships correlations and all of it uh, they come under the quantitative study okay usually a 100 participant study is some something considered as a good study in case uh, if it is a common topic in case if it is a rare study some genetic disorder or uh, you know cases that are quite uh, a few in number you can go with a small quantity okay uh, and uh, because usually researchers regard a sample size of 100 as a minimum sample size okay <laughs> then uh, because uh, sample size is important in order to maintain that precision of the estimate and in order to draw the conclusion a minimum sample size is necessary and more the sample size the better it is okay and then we have a comparative and an experimental study which requires more than 50 samples it's not just taking the positives but even the negatives as well in order to compare uh, compare something and uh, it is also an experimental study okay because in case you use a uh, less than 100 values you know the the survey analysis and uh, the statistical calculations online it will not be correct and not that precise so make sure your sample size is good okay and then you have another study called the analysis study that is either through the forums or online polls web surveys and then uh, uh, questionnaires or interviews and all of it they come under the analysis study and then we have uh, that is it under the thesis statement so what did we do uh, under the thesis statement you have to know the topic you have to know the aim or the objective of the study and then you have to know the method of collection of all the relevant information then we have um, yeah ethical committee approval see in case you are dealing with uh, injecting something into the patient or you know uh, conducting running lab tests on the patient or uh, you know uh, taking information from the patient all of it requires a permission from the ethical committee that is you have to write a letter and well it all it is in my presentation and then people who are interested can actually give me a mail i will do i do respond to them 
and then uh, that is requesting you know when you have to your you have to first submit it to your college principal and then to the superintendent and then the head of the department and then you have to take the permission apart from that you have a separate ethical committee review meeting where you will actually prepare all of the you know your aim research and uh, saying that whatever you're doing is actually safe on the patient or what kind of information you're collecting and that you have taken a consent from the patient all of it you have uh, your aim an objective and all of this and you will be given it is more or less like an interview so that is how you will present yourself to the ethical committee and then once the ethical committee approves then you are done okay you do not forget to take a consent form do not reveal personal details of your patient and then take a consent form explain the patient in their own uh, native and local language and then in case if you do not have to run the tests on the patient you can take the previous value values as well uh and then uh, you have to confirm that there are no risks associated uh, with your research on the patient so make sure you're doing that and then that is it patient uh, you have uh, i have a patient data collection form here as well and then a patient consent form so i do have three forms here ethical committee uh, patient data form and the consent form so interested people do email me and uh, this is all for the first part of the video the next part we will discuss about uh, how to create a paper outline and then writing the first draft of your research paper making the text body of the text and then uh, the introduction part and then the conclusion part apart from that i think i'll make another video on how do you actually calculate the quantitative uh, uh, calculations and i'll tell you the sites where you have to go and actually do the calculations your graphs and all of that uh, statistics part which is quite important for your conclusion apart from that uh, i think we will actually discuss another uh, uh, an entire paper of uh, you know something that i have done so we can actually go through it and there'll be like an example for you so thank you so much for watching so stay tuned to the series